So here we are, last game of the season, and of course it's the biggest as well, the Champions League final. Now, many have this game as a foregone conclusion, but we're going to tell you why it may be a lot closer than some think. Now, Man City are one game away from, of course, that historic treble and maybe the best treble of all time. Let me know in the comments down below. How do you feel about that one? Is it the best treble or not? Is it the greatest? Is it the biggest treble? Is it the widest treble of all time? Let me know. Depends who you ask. But they have to face an Inter side playing their best football under Simone Inzaghi. Inter are a team who won't roll over on an occasion like this and they have shown that they have big match qualities about them. Whilst Man City will be favourites, overwhelming favourites, I think it's still important that we look at what this Inter team can offer and how they could even give Man City a shock during this final. Before we get into it, if you have been enjoying the content this season, do me a favour. We are so close to 250,000 subscribers. You could be in that select group by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. And hit the like button as well if you're feeling generous. Right, the lineups, Man City. Now, those who watched the FA Cup final preview will know that we talked about trust and how Pep will look to those who are currently in form and best suited to the tactical system that he has developed over the season. And I think this will be the case again in this match with not much deviation from that FA Cup final plan. But there is a different way of thinking about this one. By the end of the FA Cup match, there were some Man City players it kind of looked like they were sort of hanging on a little bit. There was a feeling of, you know, exhaustion. Maybe there's got to be some emotional emotional exhaustion for this team, which is just sort of part and parcel of trying to go and win a treble. Pep Guardiola looked completely shocked when Rodri dropped to his knees from exhaustion. And a big part of that could have been the temperatures pitch side with the average temperature on the pitch lingering around 25 degrees now look I know Rodri's used to a bit of heat but look we're kind of in the summer months now this is June so it's worth noting that Pep tends not to make many changes to the team when in winning positions and often keeps the first 11 on the pitch for as long as possible he's done this a few times in the Champions League and often hasn't made a single substitution during the first legs of matches this was the case in the FA Cup 2, with the first sub being Phil Foden for KDB in the 76th minute. Man City made three subs during the match, but only two of them were tactical subs. But with the exhaustion showed in the FA Cup final, I think this may play into Pep's thought process, maybe even tactical approach, and we'll discuss this in the next section of the video. Inter Milan, on the other hand... Their lineup is more interesting than City's because there will actually be a few big changes to their team compared to what we saw in the semi finals. So, for example, a Serbi will likely start on the bench despite being immense against Milan over both legs. But the return of Stefan de Vrij makes an a Serbi start pretty unlikely for me. The other addition to the team could be Milan Skriniar. He hasn't played since March, but has been on the bench twice over the last two weeks. And as far as natural defenders go, there aren't many better. If he starts, it will be at the expense of Matteo Darmian, who isn't even a centre-back, but played well as a right-sided centre-back in those Milan derbies. The next and final difference is Marcelo Brozovic. This is due to Henrik Mkhitaryan's injury picked up in the semi-final. It's only a muscle strain, but he hasn't played since this injury. So it's up in the air if he's going to start or not. If he doesn't start, it looks like Brozovic will take up that holding position usually occupied by Chalanoglu, with him moving to the left side of that midfield three. This could potentially work in favour of Inter because as a three, Chalanoglu, Brozovic and Barella are more defensive-minded. Having said that, Mkhitaryan has put up some good defensive numbers this season in Serie A and actually the Champions League as well. But I think overall it is that little bit more defensive. The strikers probably pick themselves with the only question being when does Lukaku come on? He started a few matches in Serie A towards the back end of the season with good performances against Atalanta, Torino and Sassuolo. But I think the chemistry of Dzeko and Martinez will see them start as the front pair for Inter Milan. For the final time this season, to the tactics ball. Retention. And... So, 
Let's talk about the start of the game. Because if you remember when we said that Man City being jaded towards the end of the FA Cup final might sort of nuance their approach in this match, it wasn't long ago. It was literally just like about a minute ago. This is what we were talking about. <laughs> so with Man City struggling for legs towards the latter stages, I think what they'll do in this game, I think they're going to be super aggressive early on and try and win the match early and then look to utilise their squad depth later on in the match. We'll talk about Inter in a minute, but I expect them to sit very deep, as you can see here, with a back five and a three in front of them. With the three being flat, the goal will be to make spaces around zone 14 hard to come by. But with the three sitting so deep, I expect it to allow Rodri to play further forward. Where are you? There he is. See the arrow. See the arrow. See the arrow. And also, for those of you wondering, I mean, if you don't know this by now, we talk about zone 14 a hell of a lot. And it's here. Okay. So we saw against Bayern Munich that this can happen. You know, this may see Rodri have a few shots from distance as well as providing balls into the half spaces for Gundogan, who is intelligent enough to find spaces against a low block. Another method I expect Man City to use is playing the ball to their wingers when the back three are in possession. As you can see, the centre of the pitch is going to be very, very congested but because of all of this it will allow for progressive passes by Walker and Akanji direct to Bernardo Silva as shown here on here bit of German in there in this Champions League final who, who thought that was coming <laughs> I didn't that's for sure this is where the sort of the Roberto De Zerbi tactic of playing around the press comes into play. So I expect Bernardo and Grealish as wingers to receive the ball in advanced areas and to play it inside to either KDB and Gundogan and then make that secondary move to the byline as there could be space there if the moves are, you know, high enough in tempo which I think you can always do with Man City because they're so bloody brilliant. Another tactic that could derive from this is that KDB starts playing crosses to the back post when Bernardo Silva plays it inside to him. With not much space to operate within the box, I think Haaland's best chance will be to look for that back post party, get those crosses coming in and hope for a, a miscommunication or lapse of concentration between the inter defence, who are all great defenders, but haven't played with each other that much recently due to those injuries. So after 60 minutes, if Man City have a lead by the 60th minute, I expect them to move into something like this. I expect Pep would sub on Ake and Mares at the very least to keep the freshness and to avoid the fatigue scene in the FA Cup final. With City showing that they can be comfortable out of possession, I think this is what it would look like in the game with KDB being a shadow striker, maybe even Foden or Alvarez coming on for him around the 80th minute. Now, on to Inter Milan. A la Lavagna Tatika! That's to the tactics board in Italian. So, um, this is how I expect Inter to try and hurt Man City, as previously discussed. They're likely to sit incredibly deep whilst this may look defensive initially it actually works well for them given the profiles within the team and how they can look to get the best out of them in attack for example you've got Denzel Dumfries who plays as a winger really um, despite being the number two which I know can you know put a lot of people off but he does play super super high and we should expect him to play as high as possible when Inter attack. This gives Inter the option of looking for those crossfield diagonal balls and shifting the Man City defence to Dumfries' side of the pitch. I think the hope there is that it opens up space for DeMarco on the other side and vice versa. DeMarco's movement and output on the left could be key for Inter's attack. He's got five assists in the Champions League alone this season and provides quality when in those attacking areas. I think the triangle of Dzeko, Chalanoglu and DeMarco is going to be really, really important here. Let me, let me, let, if I may, if I may just beep, bop, boop, cheeky. Oh, let's stop there. Stop. Okay. I think it's going to be huge for Inter. Absolutely huge. How do we stop it? How does it end? What on? Oh, God. I don't know how to stop it. That. Oh, God. No. I'm, I'm pressing other things. 
I'm pre- I'm definitely pressing up with it. Let's just refresh it. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. High quality stuff. Right to the end of the season, guys. Look, those that triangle of those three players, I think it's going to be huge for Inter. And if the trio construction moves together down that left-hand side, Inter got a good chance of creating chances. Barella's positioning will also be fascinating, I think. He, similarly to Dumfries, likes to get as advanced as possible, you know, whenever he can. And he has that energy to go and do that. Both Dumfries and Barella, they don't really get involved in build-up compared to the players on that left-hand side. So instead, they will move up the pitch directly and become options in latter stages of moves. A fun note about Barella is that he often attempts outrageous volleys. Let's call it now, right? If he scores an outrageous volley, clip this up and get it out there. ASAP. Martinez is also going to have a huge part to play when into play the ball to him. Martinez's ability as a hold-up striker is underrated generally, I would say. He's also able to receive the ball on the half turn and drive into those defences. This is why I expect Brozovic to try and play direct vertical balls into his feet as frequently and as early as possible because it could kickstart some inter attacks. So to summarise, inter system, it's literally like a sort of Jekyll and Hyde if you split it up into left and right of the pitch. The right side doesn't get that involved in build-up play and looks to take up advanced positions as quickly as possible. Whilst the left side is going to try and sort of knit together opportunities. Not many teams have an asymmetric approach like this one and it's the first time that Man City are going to have to face a side that play in such a clearly unique system. Okay, time for my prediction how I see this one playing out. I went for Fiorentina to beat West Ham and this game is has some similarities. Now, you've got a much better side on the ball, but you're obviously up against a much better side in Man City, okay? I do think the left-hand side is crucial. Um, but the thing that I... And Inter Milan, of course, if they can get that first goal or if they can keep it nil-nil to the second half, I do think there is... Uh, an element of exhaustion in this Man City side but what I do keep going back to is just how complete they are and what I mean by that as well as much as how brilliant they are with the ball it's it's the age of these guys the experience of these guys and the fact that they've been playing with each other for five six years now I think that's just going to be too strong and uh, In the Champions League, there's been one player for me that I haven't been able to keep my eyes off. And I think he's just been so crucial, both with the ball, but without the ball as well. And that is Bernardo Silva. And when they're working down this left hand side, the thing that, you know, all these well laid plans are great. And if they can have the quality, then again, great. But I think they're also a, you know, a group of players that aren't at the same level of this Man City side. And I think Bernardo Silva, him up against DeMarco, I think he wins that battle. I really do. And I think up against Bastoni, who is a cracking defender, I think there could be some trouble down this right-hand side for them. And I just really believe that. It's, I think it's going to be Bernardo Silva's night. Not sure if that's going to come from the goals or from... Just generally, like, you know, a Bayern Munich performance that we saw earlier in the competition. But I I keep looking at the, you know, concentration of the play down that left-hand side for Inter Milan in terms of trying to get out. And Bernardo Silva's tenacity, stamina, energy, and, you know, just ability on the ball. And I just really feel like this is going to be Bernardo Silva's final. That's the player I keep coming back to. KDB can always offer those moments of magic, for sure. And I think... You know, with Brozovic inside, as we expect, I think you've obviously got someone who will, they will be able to soak up a certain amount of pressure. You've also got Anana, who's got, you know, we haven't even spoken about Anana. He is a phenomenal goalkeeper with great feet. So could cause some problems there where another key matchup, Dumfries against Akanji, possibly on that counter-attack, looking to find him at some point. He's going to have to be switched on. And I hate doing this on a a preview because when you do it, you kind of go... Oh, it could work. It could be this way. It could be this way. It could be this way. And then you get to the prediction. It's the complete opposite. That is how I feel. I think that they will blitz this Inter Milan team. I think the clarity and calm and the moment that these players are in for Man City is just too much. And I think they will comfortably win this. And I've said it on ESPN and I'll say it here as well. 
and I could get this so wrong, so wrong, so, so wrong. But as I say, with predictions, it's not kind of what I want, it's what I think will happen. I think Man City will reach their zenith here. I think they will destroy Inter Milan. I do. I think they've got just enough energy left in the tank to put these guys to the sword. And I think they'll do it quite comfortably. And on ESPN, I said 4-0. I think 3-0 is a safer bet. But I, I would not be surprised if this is you know, an iconic scoreline for a pretty iconic team who have waited a long time to win that Champions League and I think now will do so. I think it will be 4-0 and I think Bernardo Silva will be the player that after we talk about Haaland and the goal that he's got and the seasons he's had, I think we'll talk about Bernardo Silva having one hell of a game here. That is what my gut is saying, but I might be wrong. Guys, what do you think? Historic treble on the cards. I think it's on its way. But what do you think? Let me know. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. And have a great day. How will Spurs line up with Ange Postacoglu? Can Ange Postacoglu turn Spurs into Manchester City? And can I get through this video without doing an Australian accent? Let's find out. God, it's tough. So this is how Postacoglu is going to revolutionise Tottenham Hotspur from the top to the bottom.